Hello and welcome back to another edition of Scale War Machines. Sorry it's taken so long to get a video out, but I've been super busy and life has got in the way. However, I have got something very exciting for you. I received this package courtesy of Heavy Hobby and their distributor Hobby Hives. They sent it to me to review on Scale War Machines. Now, I'm going to open it up on camera and you'll get a sense of what's inside. When I was contacted by Heavy Hobby, I was really keen to review their products because Heavy Hobby specializes in 3D printing. This is something I'm particularly interested in for scale modeling. Obviously the potential is huge and I've reviewed a couple of other 3D printed products and product ranges on scale war machines. It's certainly a technology that has lots of potential. And as you'll see, this huge package contained multiple references that were very generously sent to me so I could get a feel for what's on offer and show you what's available. And as you'll also see, the technology has really come on and is starting to show its true potential and true promise. I tried to order things that give a really good cross section that represented A, the technology and that I could actually use on my projects. And they broadly fit into the following categories. We've got sort of German armour, a bit of British or Allied armour stuff, and also some diorama accessories, which you'll find there. So without further ado, we'll take each section at a time. I'm just going to walk you through everything so you get a real sense of what's on offer. The first thing I would say as we go through each category is I've been completely blown away by the quality. I've already gone through and done detailed shots of these. This really is starting to show some impressive signs of being a useful technology for modelers. The one thing that always held me back in the past was problems of resolution. Resolution basically means those little fine lines or striations that the 3D printer makes. I'll be especially looking forward to seeing how these compare. Let's kick off then with the diorama accessories. Three references. I ordered an air conditioner external unit and I was sent a plastic beer box and a plastic storage box. Let's open them up. Now the first thing I should say is I've removed the bulk of the foam and the packaging. These come extremely well packaged but you can see immediately how the products arrive. You're obviously going to be used to sprues, but in 3D printing they come in these kind of baskets. And if we cut to the detail shots, you can see the level of detail and lack of any kind of printing marks is really impressive. I mean, just one little detail, I'll pick up on these. If you look at the internal construction of the air conditioning unit, and I've compared this with an actual air conditioning unit, it's just so detailed and it's way more detailed than plastic or even resin. Um, casting could achieve. It's got the rounded edge within the actual construction itself. It's just mind-blowing. So anyway, that's that. Another impressive plastic beer box. Again, look at the detailing. Just absolutely amazing. All the shapes and contours. The sort of thing that plastic slide moulding was getting close to being able to achieve, but obviously 3D printing can achieve that so easily. And finally for you, the kind of evergreen diorama product that could be used obviously mainly in a modern diorama. The level of cleanliness in terms of the printing is just incredible and I can't see any lines at all on that. So I think you can just spray these and use them. All right, let's move on. One thing I would say is I really like these little plastic containers they come in and they do come bagged as well. Right, let's move on to the German armour references, of which there are plenty in the catalogue. Now, I ordered these principally for future projects I'm actually going to use these on. One bunch of stuff is to do with Panthers, I've got a little project in mind, and so if you look at the Hobby Hives website or the Heavy Hobby list of products, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but I ordered on vehicle kind of accessories for the Panther, as well as a bunch of stuff for a future Tiger, and also some generic German armour stuff. So let's have a look at these. Now this blew me away. You can get stuff either empty or fully kitted out with tools. That avoids you the need to do any sort of etched, scratch building, etc. It's all there. But let's have a look at the empty Panther vehicle tool set. But just have a look at that. 
It's all good to go with straps and everything. All printed together. All on the little stalks you'd expect in 3D printing. But take a look at that. The level of detail is just astonishing. All the clamps and everything are already in place. They're even hollowed out and that is just incredible. I don't know whether you can see it there. Look along the shaft of the axe. You can see, you can just see it through the cage. It's actually hollow. So if you just look there, that is incredible. All the little pipes and supports have holes in and a hollow. That would be impossible even with slide moulding, I think. Now the real test is going to be removing all of this, of course, and we'll do that later and I'll show you how to do that. And if we compare it with the full one, it's got everything already on it. So all the onboard tools, everything, fire extinguisher, etc. Already there in place. Just absolutely mind-blowing. Obviously you need to look at the website for pricing and so on, but it's already there, you just remove it and attach it to the vehicle. Or at least that's the theory and we're going to put that to the test. This is brackets of spare track for Panzer Kampfwagen Panther. You can see more details in these close-ups. Again, just beautifully detailed. The tool storage bucket Panther Aus A and D. Really impressive. They're still on their stalks, but you should be able to see the level of printing. I mean, if we just grab the, the kind of lid or the opening, you can see that the handle's already done. There's clasps on it. Also included in the pack is an open lid. So should you want to show it all open, you can do that. There's also an open end there. And this is where I think the technology still struggles a bit on rounded surfaces. I think this company has absolutely nailed it on flat surfaces. There's a tiny, tiniest amount of striations. I mean, it won't even show on camera. And so the test will be to spray these and see how they look, but very, very impressive. Then a whole bunch of on-vehicle tools, generic, that could be used on a number of vehicles. Let's just have a look at the camouflage lights first then. These are rounded but actually printed perfectly. This is an example, there are no problems at all. There's even little details like writing on the light itself. The cable conduit connector is hollowed out. There's even little details like screws and attachments. It's just mind-blowing. You can see on this, on the face of this one, there's even the screw holes. So you get different varieties, of course. This again is really nicely done. Uh, there's detail right underneath as well, something that would be hard to achieve with conventional moulding. Be looking forward to using those on a whole bunch of different vehicles, so you know, one set will last a long time. Now this might interest people, there's still, well, one of the last videos I posted about 3D printing included clamps and there was some debate in the comments about whether it's worth it, whether they're realistic enough. Photo etch might still be better for some people. These are just top quality, they're so fine and detailed, amazing. But take a look at the shots and see for yourself. Different designs, of course, open, closed, etc. And again, this is another example of the sort of onboard vehicle stuff that you might want to use on a project. Fire extinguishers, late type World War II Germany. You can see empty ones, perfect for sort of abandoned or looted vehicles, destroyed vehicles. But you get the fire extinguishers by themselves as well, which is great. Really, really nice. So we move on to the Allied stuff. Again, these will be used probably on my ongoing Cromwell build and Shermans that I've got uh, gracing my shelf. These were a standout product, the World War II British Aerial Bases types A and B. Very useful for your Allied armour, British and Commonwealth type armour. The Aerial, complete with its guard, is all very delicately printed. And we'll remove one of these later to see how, how it can be done. But yep, yeah, you get different types of aerials and bases, all impeccably printed, as you can see in these detail shots. These are the Sherman VVS suspension tracks, the Sherman family obviously, uh, but they show elements of wear, and I did actually put some of these together, and it wasn't a hassle to put them together by any means. They clicked together, it wasn't a problem at all. 
very easy to manipulate the little end connectors and uh, yeah looking forward to using these and with these what's good is there's no cleanup they're all good to go straight out the bag and for comparison the British Cromwell tank tracks these are slightly different in that they've got pins and that they are slightly more fiddly but the level of printing again no cleanup on the actual links these would be more time consuming to build no different really from any other resin type tracks or from let's say white metal but very detailed and I did some comparison shots you're just in the territory of assembling these using the pins which some people may like some people may not like you get plenty of pins with them that rounds up the allied references if you want to see what's on offer go check out the links in the description for hobby hives where you can find out prices and availability and the extent of the range it is a very wide-ranging selection of references so what i propose is to split this video into two parts in part two you'll see a demonstration element what i'm going to do is build the air conditioning unit and paint it i'm also going to have a go at removing and painting this oh, our first damage there we go so it is possible to damage things that's my fault for going too quickly and there's the part and finally i'm going to attempt to remove the most complex item and we'll see how we get on the fear of course is if something snaps that's my first fail we need to find a better way of doing it and until then i leave you with these pictures and i'll see you next time Subscribe for our latest videos.